one uh, simple example. First, we will identify a variables for a system, and then we will try to draw a causal diagram for this one. Hypothesis of dynamics in urban region. The job availability attracts migrants to the city. New arrivals to city expand the labor population. Population observes available jobs, decreasing job availability. In the long run, as labor also de creates demand for additional services and facilities, a further increase in the number of jobs in the city comes about. More jobs increases job availability. It's a pretty simple and uh, kind of uh, an example written in a more straightforward language. So, using this, we can identify one causal link per statement. So, that is what uh, it is about. So, we have a job availability attracts migrants to the cities. So, job availability should influence migrants or migration into the city in migration. And as migrations occur, that expands the labor population within the city for second statement. So, first statement the variables are job availability increases migrants are more jobs are job availability is there more migrants are into city as more migrants are as migration happens migrants are going to expand the labor population within the city as population of the entire pop this thing labor as this labor population absorbs existing jobs decreases job availability. So, population is going to take up jobs and jobs will decrease job availability. In the long run labor also creates demand for additional services as more labor comes new shops open new services has to be offered. So, that will after long term increase the number of job availabilities within the city. So, we will identify this let us take it. CLD example 1. So, we can identify some variables called as say job availability migration labor population and jobs. These are four variables we identified. Using this let us create our kind of first causal loop. So, let us create the links I guess. So, let us take the job availability we say affects our migration. The first statement said job availability attracts migrants to the city. So, job availability is more, migration is going to be more, that is what we can intuitively expect. So, job availability affects migration. So, these left side are the initial variables we identified, and migration expands the labor population within the city. So, migration increases the labor. Population. This labor population is more. What can you expect? The job availability has to come down because they are observing the new jobs. Decreases job availability. But of course, as more jobs come. There is more job availability. And there is one more statement there which had uh, the same variable, two links. Other one was the labor population after some time in increases jobs within the system. So, to indicate the after some time part, we can simply put a D on the link to indicate that there, there is some delay 
the process after some time the labor population increases the jobs in the system. So, these are initial set of causal links that we have created based on the description, but this again is still very cumbersome to read we can just combine all of them we do not need to repeat all the variables so many times and create what we call as a nice causal map of it. We are continuing the same example let us start with job availability you can call it in migration also we are not talking about people leaving, people coming in, you can make it more explicit. Then we have uh, labor population, then we have jobs, these are unique variables that we have. Job availability increases, in migration increases, in migration is more, you can expect increase in labor population. Plus, the labor population absorbs the jobs, a decrease in general job availability has to happen, which, but after some time, the labor population increases the number of jobs, but after some time, so there is a delay, and as jobs increases, of course, job availability also tends to increase. So, just to indicate it, uh, this. D indicates delay. So, this is a nice diagram we have. This captures the same description that we had in English, but it is much more easier to read and much more compact. So, the idea is to not to just make the diagram, but also to have our discussions revolved around that. Suppose we say okay, as job availability is more, you can expect the immigration to increase, that in turn is going to increase our labor population, that is going to absorb the jobs. As labor population increases, that is going to decrease the number of jobs available. So, as jobs decreases, you can expect migration also to slow down the migration rate. As migration rate slows down, the labor population increase that also slows down. And it is going to come to some sort of a balance in the system. So, this loop will again be a balancing loop. This loop is again a balancing loop. So, in this model, as you can see, there are two loops. They start with job availability, in migration, labor population, jobs, and job availability. There is an outer loop and there is an inner loop. So, inner loop is negative feedback. Let us look at outer loop as job availability is more in migration increases as they increase labor population increases as labor population increases jobs increase that increases again job availability. So, there is a positive feedback also that is happening in the same direction or strengthening the phenomenon. So, this so we have one reinforcing loop or a positive feedback loop this is a balancing loop or a negative feedback loop. Again the term positive negatives are all placeholders, negative does not mean bad, positive does not mean it's good, this reinforcing or balancing or positive or negative. Throughout the course you will find that it is very easy to explain the concepts. In fact, that is it that is the entire thing about causal loop diagram, I am done. So, uh, the difficulty comes in when you start practicing it and start trying to say for example, read newspapers and try to come up with the causal map of what is actually happening to understand dynamics. Now, that becomes challenging. Uh, there are some certain guidelines for this causal loop diagram which I will discuss. Let me move on to some of those guidelines for the causal loop diagram. So, this about description itself is called as a reference mode. So, many times we can use this causal loop diagram, this kind of mapping to actually understand what the problem is. Many of us want to become analysts, right. So, this kind of system thinking tool will really help you make a good analyst or a systems analyst rather than focusing on the domain of the subject, you can actually become system analyst. But these kind of causal diagram can help understand and link the various variables 
that help understand the problem. This itself can help discover what the actual problem is that we are trying to solve. Okay. So uh, we already seen this: the loop polarity links we saw, and loops also we saw balancing loop and reinforcing. Uh, this going by reinforcing it when uh, loop feedback loop response opposes the original perturbation, the loop is negative or goal seeking. When feedback loop response reinforces the original perturbation, the loop is positive or uh, reinforcing. So negative loop or goal seeking loop or a balancing loop, the same, and uh, reinforcing or positive feedback loop are the same. Okay, so one way to understand that is uh, suppose we have links like this. So for example, x one of x x two of x x three, uh, which again affects uh, x one, right? And if you want to do it the right way, then what we need to do is split it. Let us call it x one say dash. Let us see how x1 affects x2 and how x2 affects x3 and in turn how x3 affects x1. Okay. Seeing, uh, meaning we kind of cut the cut one of the variable and say okay, let us initially allow x1 to increase and as x1 changes, how does it affect x2? And x2 changes, how does it affect x3? And again, as x3 changes, how do you affect x1? Ensure that you again come back and see what is happening to the variable x1. Which it, which you perturbed initially, the, and if the original direction of x1 dash and x double dash is the same, then we say that it is a reinforcing loop or a positive feedback loop. If it is the opposite direction, as we initially perturbed this in the, by increasing it, but then eventually x1 double dash seems to decrease here, then it becomes a goal seeking loop or a negative feedback loop. We are not interested in the quantum of increase. We are not interested in quantum of increase. We are only looking at the direction. It may be that even the positive or negative the direction is very tiny, but still we are only interested in that for now. When we move the simulation, put numbers, then we will worry about actual uh, actually how the system is behaving. We will come to that. But right now we can only worry about the uh, direction of like for example, the job availability attracted huge number of migrants, but maybe the their job creation is very low. The new jobs that they add to the system it can be there. It's because labor population high doesn't mean that similar number of jobs has to be created. But the direction is the same. The number of some additional jobs happen. That's what we are trying to say. So, which, uh, okay, I'm here for that. Means, yeah. So even in this. So, one of the shortcut to figure out whether it is positive or negative feedback loop is simply count the number of positive or negative signs within a loop. So, the number of negative signs is odd, then it is a positive feedback loop. So, here if you see plus plus and there is one minus sign, so there is odd number of minus signs, so it must be a negative feedback loop. Even in this example, I can do one more. So, let us say x. Y, Z, W, X. So here, suppose I have minus, plus, minus, plus. As X increases, so there are two negative feedbacks. So X increases, Y decreases. As Y decreases, Z also decreases. Same direction. As z decreases, w increases. As w increases, x again increases. So it is in the same direction. Finally, the variable variable x. So short way is there is two negative feedbacks, or a even number of negative feedbacks, of a negative links. Then it is a positive feedback system. If it's odd. As x increases, y decreases. As y decreases, z again increases. As z increases, again w decreases. As w decreases, 
x also decreases. So, eventually x went down when you originally started with x increasing. So, the shorter way is you can see there is odd number of negative links that means it must be a negative feedback loop. So, we have two loops here loop job availability in migration labor population job availability this is a loop. The second case job availability in migration labor population jobs job availability. So, that is the loop. So, and all are in positive directions that case you do not have any problem it is all are positive it has to be a positive feedback system. The only problem comes in when there is one negative link then what happens then count the number of negative links if it is even then it must be a become a positive feedback if it is odd number of negative links we have then must be a positive feedback. Then as I told there are all these small tips that we can give but then we will uh, we'll go through them and then we will do a lot of examples. Yeah, so the number of negative links in a loop is even, the loop is uh, reinforcing, number of negative links in loop is odd, the loop is balanced.